Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out. Aqualians from Lifestyle Board Games. This is for one to four players. It take about 20 minutes to play it. It's for ages four plus. And in Aqualiums, you're going to take a cute little uh, alien that's aquatic or something like that. And you're going to give it arms and legs based on what you see on a card. It is a simple children's racing game where you're trying to build your Aqualian faster than everyone else at the table using these see-through little things that will have arms and tentacles on them. What am I talking about? Is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Aqualian. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule sheet. It is one small page, double sided, and I have one big problem with it, and that is the fact that this is a one to four player game, yet there is no solo way to play the game that is listed in the rules. Uh, but other than that, it will teach you how to play the game very, very simple. Another thing I want to mention is this is clearly not a good table to play the game because you might not even notice that a lot of the pieces are actually on the table. But we're still going to soldier through this and I'll show you how the game is played. I also want to mention that there are tons more of these clear things that are not out here. And that's one of the, the cons that I forgot to mention that setting this game out can be a little bit of a burden. But in this game, what you're trying to do is you're going to take your Aqualian and you are going to be putting tentacles and arms on this bad boy or bad girl and you're going to be racing to do that. How you're going to do that is by taking these plastic sh uh, plastic little sheets right here, matching up the, the what is that shape, triangle in the upper left hand corner and boom putting it on like so. So let's go over the components, let's get in the gameplay. So first we got all these sheets, obviously you can pretty much get a grasp for them. They have arms, they have legs, tentacles, whatever you want to call them and they come in various different amounts. You're also going to get your little alien, which you will put in front of you. You're gonna be giving them arms and legs, so apparently they can grab seashells. And then you're gonna have this big stack of cards right here, which will tell you exactly how many arms you have and how many tentacles you are going to need to have. And this is the crux of the game. You're, what you're gonna do, you're gonna flip over a card, and then everyone is going to race to try and achieve that goal. So let's see if I can do this not being able to see anything on my table. So right now, uh, we need three, three, oh, that's the wrong way. So there's one tentacle, so I need two more tentacles. So let's see, is that, that's a hand. So this one wouldn't work because that would give us a hand and we don't need a hand. Oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. I can't see anything. Uh, um, there we go, perfect, hopefully perfect. So this one goes right here. And just like that, oh, actually, oh, bummer. See, it tricks you like that. So I only have two tentacles, so I still need one more tentacle on the bottom. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, there it is. Maybe that's it. Yes. So there we go. If I was the first person to do that, I would get a point, a.k.a. a card. The first person to get five cards will win the game. After you're done, you put all of them back in the middle like so, and you rinse, wash, and repeat. And then, in a nutshell, that's how you're going to play Aqualians. All right, then. Aqualians from Lifestyle Board Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros. Let's go with the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First thing I didn't like was I was really excited because it said one to four players. So this had a solo variant in it, but that is not in the rules. But I was incredibly excited about that because if you have kids this age, you know that very young kids, age three, four, or five years old, will get, will get infatuated with certain games. And if this had a solo variant that was good that a kid that age could play by themselves, that would be fantastic because they always want to play a game over and over and over again. My son, for instance, Dozen Donuts. Right now, he's just infatuated with Dozens Donuts. And we play boatloads of games, but he always wants to go back with, to Dozen Donuts, which is great. But still, if they would have had a solo variant, that would have probably knocked this up a half point at least. Another comment I have with this game is that the setup, I mean, it's, it's kind of annoying with the setup. There is a lot of these tentacles, and you're going to need a large table space to play this game. You know, that is a minor nitpick, but it is something that I did want to mention. Another comment I have with this game is that this is one of those games where if you're playing with kids, even and I, I had to do this with six and seven year olds, uh, you are going to have to pump the brakes. This is going to be one of those games that parents aren't going to have that much fun playing unless because your choices are either pump your brakes or crush your children's souls at this game. And I hate games like that where realistically 99% of kids don't have a chance to win this game unless their parents let them win this game. And that so that is somewhat of a bummer. Um, another con that I had with the game is... 
that it definitely falls in the children's category and not the family category for the most part. What I mean by that is you're probably going to get about three, maybe four years out of this game if you buy it for a kid that's, say, ages three and a half. I think children are going to start aging out of this game at about six and a half, seven years old. I know it was playing with some of the younger kids in my class, and they were a little bit bored with the game. They're like, I was like, do you want to play again? They're like, eh, can we play something else? And uh, while my son did enjoy the game, I don't have a feeling he's going to want to come back to it too frequently. Now, that being said, uh, I still probably will keep this game because there's not too many ter there's not too many there's not terribly too many games out there for kids you can play with ages say three and a half and four years old. So I do like that aspect of the game as I try not to sneeze. Any other cons that I have with the game? No, moving on to the pros, Aqua Aliens, you know, you, you always have to factor this in. This is for ages four plus. I really do think you could play this with a three and a half year old as long as they could count up to, uh, I think it goes up to six maybe. Uh, but here's the other thing. You could also take out the higher cards, you know. They go up to like you need six tentacles. If your kid can only count to say four, you can take out all the fives and the sixes and you can easily play with them. And they will have fun because kids just enjoy playing games with their parents or people who love them so for that i say that it's good and if you have young kids this is not a bad game to add to your collection now are there better games for this age range absolutely i can think of five to ten off the top of my head especially a lot of the hob affair but this is not a bad game if your kids really like the artwork i think the kids really do will dig the artwork my son absolutely loved the artwork and he had a lot of fun kind of creating his little aliens but that's another con i have the game is that they have these little these little tiny uh, these triangles in the upper left hand corner that you need to match up specifically with the one on your card and both the seven-year-olds that i played with and my son got a little bit frustrated because sometimes they couldn't figure out exactly where the tentacle was supposed to go it's a minor nitpick but something that i wanted to mention in the end Aqualians is okay. That's the best I could do. It's not, I, I, I would say, if you have kids that are age three and a half to six and a half years old, I even go as far to say it's a good children's game. Uh, you know, okay to good game, but it's not great. It's not something that's going to wow most people. And I can think of a lot of other better children's games that are out there. So that is Aqualians from Lifestyle Board Games. This is one that I'm going to keep to play with my son. Uh, my, my kid that just turned two, but after that, I probably am just going to get rid of this one. There you go. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Aqualians. What, what, what does that actually mean? So are these aliens that we discovered who live underwater? Like they live in the aqua? Is there any description on the back? Oh, we'll find out. Actually, there's no question. There's an answer. What is an aqualian? Meet these adorable creatures that live on the bottom of a deep blue ocean. They really like seashells, and as everyone knows, you can never have too many seashells. So they have learned to grow new arms and tentacles so they can always grab just one more seashell. Layer the transparent cards to complete the task, but make sure to use as few cards as possible. The quickest player wins the points. I guess that really doesn't answer much. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments below. Anything. I, I really don't care. Tell me anything.